This is the Fiat 500 BART. Now this car might look cute and tiny, like it could be no fun at all, but the Abarth model, which I have here, has 160 horsepower and with sport mode enabled 170 pound-feet of torque, which makes this little 2,500 pound monster a blast to drive through the city streets of Los Angeles, as I do here, even with its five-speed manual transmission. Now I borrowed this car from myself as I bought it a few short weeks ago after watching videos from Hoobie's Garage and the man himself, Doug DeMuro. Now, Doug did a great job of talking about how fun this car is for less than $9,000, but today I want to walk you through some quirks and features which Doug may have missed. As Doug mentioned, on the front of this car you will find the Abarth Scorpion logo. You'll find this all over the car, but what's interesting is this emblem crest is actually part of a little intake slot, as you can see the slotted grille there, which allows colder air to flow into the car and keep the turbo a little bit cooler. The other interesting thing you'll note as soon as you start driving the Abarth in town is you cannot go straight over speed bumps, dips, potholes, almost anything on the road because the stock height of the front little lip included here is just about six inches off the ground. For reference, here's my tiny hand, here's my fist, and if I put my thumb up, you can see it's already touching that lip. As with any car, storage is very important, so Fiat thought that through and put two cup holders here in the front with a little space for your wallet or maybe your house keys. But the interesting part is a standard size bottle does not fit into either side of the cup holder here unless it's pressed down really firmly and even then, it's not so convenient. However, in the back, the cup holders seem to have used a different mold and fit this bottle perfectly. And to turn on the actual AC compressor, what you're gonna have to do is tap the little snowflake icon and you'll see the orange light up, except during the daytime, it's extremely dim, so you're just gonna have to feel the cold air come out, and at night, it works like a true beauty. Another interesting lighting situation here in the Fiat 500 Abarth is that the gauges clearly show a 6,500 RPM red line during the daytime, but at night, that red line literally disappears with the backlights. Everything looks the same color, so all of a sudden it looks like the red line disappears from 6,500 RPM all the way to the top of 8,000, so if you ever take a Fiat for a test drive at night, make sure you remember red line is at 6,500 RPM. Another interesting thing is that you won't find a lock or unlock button anywhere in this car. That's right, here on the door you see nothing of the lock mechanism, but on the driver door you have the ability to unlock or lock both of the doors without a button, just using the door handle. That's right, pull towards yourself and it'll unlock both the driver and passenger door, or push away and you will hear both of the locks click, essentially making the door handle into a lock and unlock button on its own pretty cool. Now in most cars you typically pull the sun visor towards you to unlock it from the little clasp and then you can turn it towards the side. However, Fiat did it a little bit backwards where you have to put the sun visor down first, push it away to get it to unlock, and then make sure that you grab it under and turn it to the side. Now to lock it again what you're going to do is push past the mechanism here, lift up, and then use one or two hands to get it locked into place again. Fiat was smart enough to think about the blind spots that this car has due to its hatchback design, so they've included a wide mirror on the edge of the driver's side. However, look to the passenger side in hopes of finding an extended wide mirror as well, and it's not there. However, this isn't too bad of an issue because when you turn your head to the right, you can see just clearly out of the rear hatch and windows. However, try turning your head to the left to check for your blind spots, and you'll feel like Ray Charles or Stevie Wonder. In most cars, the sport mode button does make them feel better, but not dramatically different, whereas here in the Abarth, tap the sport button, and all of a sudden you have 50% more boost. That's right, as the boost gauge indicates, in regular mode you have about 12 pounds of boost, which is what the car tries to limit at in standard mode. Hit the sport button, see it come on the dash here, and all of a sudden your boost is going to be averaging 18 PSI when you get past 3,500 RPM. This car really feels like a little sleeper when you're in regular mode, and then a hoot to drive when you're in sport. Now the beautiful part about that is if you want to get the revs up in regular mode just to hear the exhaust, you can. There are no valves, no exhaust buttons, no sport exhaust modes. The car's just loud all the time, unless you're in the low revs, in which case you could drive around without making your neighbors want to kill you. 
However, starting the car at 6.30 in the morning, like I did today, with a cold start, mm, no one's gonna be happy about that. One final thing I want to mention before I wrap up with my thoughts on the 500 BART is that although there are no volume knobs on the radio here, you do have rocker buttons on the back of the steering wheel, as many Fiat Chrysler products do. Here on the left side, you have buttons to tune your radio and even change sources. So you can change from the three and a half millimeter auxiliary port to AM radio and FM radio, or even the built-in single disc CD player. On the right side, you have volume controls and a mute switch in the center. It's actually extremely convenient where you don't even have to use your thumbs like a monkey on the front of the wheel. You can just use your middle and ring fingers on the back of the wheel to change the volume while hooting around in the Abarth. And that is the Fiat 500 Abarth. All of its quirks and features between my video and Doug's. And for $9,000, Doug is right, this is the most fun you can have in a front wheel drive car. However, take the same budget and spend it on a Mazda Miata of the second or third generation. You'll be sure to have a hoot sliding around, depending on where you live and the tracks accessible to you. For more of my thoughts on the Fiat 500 Abarth, make sure to subscribe to the channel, so I'll be doing some driving videos and modifications very soon. Thank you for watching.